Hey everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. Before we get started, did you know that I have an exclusive Facebook group that you can join? That way you can hang out with other crafters, hang out with me, share your projects, ask your questions. It's a really fun place and I'd love to have you over there. Today's video, we are going to be doing a little bit of sublimation on two different style of the can glasses. So these are both made for sublimation and that's something that you need to keep in mind when purchasing a cup if you want to use it like that. Not all cups are made for sublimation so you need to make sure that the ones you're purchasing are actually sublimation blanks. These are both from Craft Express and I'll link everything down below so that you can make sure that you're getting the right product. I love these, they come with the bamboo lids which is great so you can get lots of great like projects done with these. Now I'm going to do a clear glass and a frosted glass with the same design so that you guys can see how it works. Now I'm going to be honest with you, they didn't come out perfect and that's completely on me. I think I didn't press them long enough, so you'll see how I pressed them in the video, but I would definitely add a little bit more time to them because while it came out pretty good, there's some spots on here where the tape was that I'm not real happy with and it's really noticeable on the frosted glass, which you'll see in the video. So I would definitely use a little bit longer of a press time, but I wanted to leave that in. I wanted you guys to see that not everybody's perfect and not all of my projects come out exactly like I planned them to, and that's completely okay. It's fine, it's not a big deal. I'll just keep these ones for myself, and it was a lesson learned and one that we're gonna kind of teach you guys as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for for this tutorial, I'm going to use the can glass bundles that was part of a design bundles dollar deal. Now I do want to point out something and so I'm going to open the bundle really quick. I want to point out that these images are what they call mock-ups. These cans are not actually pressed. It's just a picture of the cans with a picture of the image on top of it. So our image may not look exactly like this when we press it. These are super, super opaque, and I think that it's not going to be quite as bright and um, vibrant as these photos show, but I just sort of wanted to point that out. So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at different pictures of bundles. So I'm going to go ahead and download my files. Now, one thing I hate is this. It's in a bunch of different parts, and I know which one I want, but I don't know which part it's in. So I specifically am just going to have to start at the top download it and go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it under my sublimation folder. And rather than unzip all these folders, I'm just gonna open the zipped folder and see if I can find the image that I want. Because if I don't have to unzip it, that's gonna save me a little bit of space on my hard drive because these are really big files. And if it's not the one that I want, I can really just delete it anyways. But you'll see they sort of have them labeled. So I'm going to look under fall can glass because this is, I think, the one that I was looking for is the pumpkin one. But I'm going to go ahead and view these and I'm going to view a large icon of them. And that will allow me to view a preview sometimes. It doesn't always work when they're zipped. So you may just need to open it and see if it's the file that you're looking for. Uh, those were not the ones that I saw. But that's not to say that these still aren't it. These are definitely not the ones that I wanted, but there are other options because there's the pumpkin can glass too, which could be what I was looking for. So this is one of those things that it may take you a while, and this is actually the one I was looking for. I wanted this one, but in the blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract this folder because this is the folder of the designs that I wanted. So what I'm gonna do is click extract all, and then I just simply have to click extract. It's going to take a second to pull all those files out of the zipped folder, but once it does, we're going to be able to use the one that we want. Now, again, to save space, you could absolutely delete the other ones. I'll typically delete stuff after I'm done using it if it's something I know I'm not going to use a lot. So we know that it was under fall glass and it was under pumpkin can glass. Now we'll be able to see the different designs. Now we have the 16 ounce and the 20 ounce. I'm going to be using a 16 ounce and I'm going to print mine through Inkscape. So what I'm going to do is right click on it and I'm going to choose open with and I'm going to open it with my Inkscape vector graphics editor. Because it's a PNG, it's going to pull up a little menu and I don't need to change anything on the menu that it pulls up. I just need to click OK. And sometimes it can take a minute, but you'll see here it's got the PNG bitmap image import. Again, don't need to change anything. Just click OK. 
It's gonna open our Inkscape, which again, can take a moment. And once it does, I'm gonna go ahead and open this much larger. Now you'll see that this looks pretty small on our page at the moment. We can zoom in on it and make it a little bit bigger. But the first thing that I need to do is go to File, and I want to change my document properties because I want this as a US letter because that's the size of paper that we're gonna use. Go ahead and close this. Now you'll notice that it is in landscape form, which is totally fine. It will print the correct direction. Um, it already knows that. You don't need to do any kind of um, fixing of this file. It's the right size, it's good to go. Now what we're gonna do is do some settings with the printer to make sure that we get a beautiful print. Go up to File and click Print. What you're gonna do is go to Preferences, but first make sure you have your right printer selected. I use an ST4000 by Epson for my sublimation printing. I'm gonna go ahead and click Preferences, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just make sure these settings are correct. Document size is a letter, it is printing on landscape, and I'm gonna change this to high quality print. The next thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna to go to more options. I'm gonna turn off high speed print. Now there's no words on this, so you don't have to mirror the image if you do not want to. If you don't care which way your pumpkins face, then you don't need to mirror your image. But if you do care and you want it to look exactly like the picture, mirror your image. Then what I'm gonna do is under color correction, I'm gonna choose custom and I'm gonna to go to advanced. The only thing I'm gonna change here is change it from Epson Vivid to Adobe RGB, making sure that my gamma stays at 2.2. I don't need to adjust the colors at all, and I'm just gonna click OK. Then click OK again, and click Print to send it to your printer. Then we're gonna take it over, and I'm gonna show you how to set it up on your glass, and we will be good to go. The first thing that I have out is my paper cutter, and I find this to be a super easy way to trim this, but you can trim it with scissors as well. This one is a paper cutter I've had forever and it works really, really well. And I really recommend doing this. You can get a really nice straight edge. Now, I don't always get the best straight edge on these. Not really a skill I possess, but definitely an option. And you want to cut off for sure this edge and this edge. It's okay if this edge up here is not exactly all the way to the edge or completely straight because it won't affect the image on the beer can glass. So I typically will cut these ones with my paper cutter and then I like to do the shorter edges just by myself with a pair of scissors. That's just personal preference. You can do it however you want but I thought I would show you kind of both ways and then you want to make sure that you cut really nice and neat along the edge and you want to get as close into the print as you can, like cutting off like the world's teeniest, tiniest sliver of the print so that you don't have any white on along that edge. And then you'll wanna do the same on this side as well. And I didn't do a very good job of that, so I just gotta go back in and trim this off. But again, you can use the paper cutter, you can use scissors. I just thought I'd show you both options just so you kinda could see that either way will work. So if you don't have a paper cutter, you can still do this. So there we go, we've got those cut off. Move all the trash to the side, put away our paper cutter, and then I'm gonna show you how to attach this print to your beer can glass. I have this super cool tape dispenser. It actually cuts the tape for me. I absolutely adore it. And then I have these beer can glasses from Craft Express. These are made to be um, used with sublimation. That's something really important that you need to make sure when you buy them. And then these ones have the cute little bamboo lid. So what I do is I'm gonna lay my design down and just sort of check its fit first before I commit to any tape. Because you can see that it's a little bit big, so we are gonna have a little bit of an area that is going to not quite line up. It's fine, I'm not super concerned about it, but it is gonna just not line up just exactly right. I do find that depending on where the cup comes from can depend on its size. So from here, I just kind of need to decide where and which side I want to trim a little bit off of. Because if you don't trim it off, you will have a really, really bad seam. If you trim it, your seam won't be quite as bad. Because you want the paper to more or less line up, not overlap, if that makes sense. So I need to cut off just a little sliver more. And usually if I cut some off one side, I will go over and cut a little bit off of the other side, just so that it stays relatively even, there's no perfect way to get it. I have yet to get it, 
But that looks pretty good. It looks like they're not going to overlap too, too much. Mm, I lied. They're still going to overlap quite a bit. This is just sort of where it comes into you. You just have to play around with it or be really good at measuring your cup before you actually print. I didn't measure because usually they fit pretty well, but this one's a little bit bigger than what we would have liked. And this is a 16 ounce cup, so it's just kind of a matter of getting it to line up. That looks pretty good. I think we'll still end up with a small seam, but I think it'll be fine. So what's great about these is that you can see through them so you can get everything lined up where you want it and as straight as you want it. And then you can kind of get your paper where you want it to be. Now you want the tops to line up and you want to try to get the image to line up right even. And this part can take a little bit of finesse and I like to hold one side really, really tight. And then the other side, I kind of shift around until they look like they match up. Those look pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is grab a piece of tape and you wanna make sure that this is super tight. So I just grab a spot that feels really tight and I tape that spot. That's why I like this tape dispenser because it automatically pulls the tape out for me. Now we are gonna have a little overlapping, but it's fine. It's not a big deal, it'll be okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tape all the way down my seam. I like to tape the whole seam on these types of cups, the glass ones. I found that by not taping them, I did get a little bit of a weird spot. So I do like to tape them down a little bit better. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Looks nice and tight. The next thing that we need to do is add a layer of butcher paper over this to protect any blowout from our paper. I just have a big roll that I got from Amazon and typically I just roll it out. I kind of figure about where my cup is and then I just cut down the paper and then we'll wrap this around the cup and it's okay if it's too tall for the cup. It doesn't have to be completely straight. None of that matters with butcher paper, but you just want to make sure you have that protective layer between the cup and your press. I know some people will do it without it, but I just really do prefer it. I find that my press stays nice and clean. So you can see I just sort of roll it up like a little burrito, grab a little more tape. And then I do give this one a quite a bit of tape on the seam as well, just so that it stays in place. You don't have to put a ton. I should just do a couple pieces just to kind of hold it there in place. Now that we've turned our press on, we need to make sure that we have everything set to the correct time temperature and all of that. So what I'm gonna do is hit set. That's gonna bring us up our temperature. 356 is about where I want it to be. Then we're gonna look at our time, which is at 60 seconds, also correct. Just hit set again, and it's gonna heat up. Get ready to press, and so we'll let that heat up. This heats up pretty quickly, and then I'm gonna show you how to insert your cup into the heat element, and then we will be ready to press. We are all warmed up and ready to go. So what you'll see here is our heating element is back here, it's this little tube. What you wanna do is slide your cup into the tube, just like so, making sure that you're not touching any of that because it is hot, and we're gonna go ahead and press this down. Now I am going to do a full 60 second press, and then I'm gonna rotate it and do another 60 seconds because there is a small seaming area at the top. I'm actually gonna pull it a few seconds before it's fully done, and we're just gonna rotate, and I do have heat gloves, and I do recommend getting some heat gloves for working with this, because when rotating it, your finger may bump that hot spot. So we're just gonna close it, and I'm gonna probably do about another 45 seconds. I don't think it needs that full 60 seconds once you've rotated it. Make sure you keep your heat gloves on, and then you're gonna be able to pull your cup out. You'll want something to set it on that is heat resistant, and I'm gonna use a heat pressing mat. All right, so I'm ready to pull this out. I've got my heat press mat out and I'm gonna set this on top of that mat because it's very, very hot. The next thing I'm gonna make sure I do is turn off my heat press and then I'm gonna let this cool for just a second and I'll get you guys an overhead view so you can watch us remove it. We are ready to take the paper off. Now I'm gonna put my heat gloves back on because this is still really hot. It's only been about 30 seconds since I took it off. I just changed camera angle so you could see better. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is pull the butcher paper off. And it's all right if it rips, it tends to. The tape likes to get really sticky on the butcher paper when it gets heated. So I usually will just end up just removing it like this until it comes off. Now I'm gonna show you kind of see through. You can kind of see the design. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but I can see it. 
Um, it doesn't look like it did too bad. We'll see. Um, sometimes the tape, I've noticed, especially with these glass ones, doesn't love to work very well. And it doesn't actually look like this transferred, like, at all. Oh, yeah, it did. Okay. For a second, it didn't look like it transferred because this is a clear glass. I wanted to make sure to use clear when I did this and not frosted so we could really get a look at kind of what it looks like. And I'll put some white paper inside of it so that we can really get a nice view of how it came out. This tape does not want to come off. I'm going to need to use a finger, and I don't like that because it is hot. But sometimes if you can't get the tape off, you're going to need to kind of pick at it. You can use tweezers as well, but I do recommend definitely heat gloves. Don't stick back down. There we go. All right, once you get it all off, and it should come off pretty easy, you might have a little bit of like paper fuzz, which we can just wipe off. That'll happen when you rip the paper. But we're gonna let this cool and then I'll put some white paper in here so you can see what this looks like. I think it's gonna look really cool with a light colored drink, but definitely not a dark. Here is the finished glass. I think it came out pretty good. Um, it does have a few spots that I'm not thrilled with, like right there and right here. But I do think, I should have pressed it just slightly longer, but I do think it came out really good. But again, it doesn't show very well unless it's a light colored liquid in it. So that's why I used white paper. If you put a dark colored liquid in it, it's not going to really show very much at all. But we're going to do this same design on a frosted cup here in just a second so that I can show you the difference between the two. I do think it looks really cute though. It's really fun. It is definitely blue. It pick up, picked up the blue really well. So we're going to do a frosted one next. So like I said, we're going to do a frosted glass as well and it's done exactly the same way. So I'm just going to line it up. And this one's a little harder because you can't quite see through it. But it's still the same general concept is that you want to get everything lined up as straight as you can. Now, I will say I did a really bad job cutting the edges on this one, so we are going to definitely have a seam. I am not, again, somebody who can cut a straight line to save my life. So I just am just going to have to just deal with that. It's okay. It's fine. We're really just living our best lives here. I don't think the seam will be super noticeable just because of the way the design is anyways. So I think it'll be fine, but I'm just sort of going through and making sure that it's pretty lined up, looks relatively straight. And then again, we're just going to use some tape along the seam, making sure that it is tight. We want to make it tight. You do want to have this paper that's on here super tight so that it does have a good um, press against your glass. If it doesn't, it won't adhere to the cup. So just want to kind of make sure it looks pretty good. All right, then we need to do butcher paper around it just like we did the first one. So same thing, you're gonna set this cup up exactly like you set the last one up. We'll press it at the same time and temp and everything, and then we can see which one looks a little bit better. one the same way that we pressed the glass one so we're gonna slide it in I'm gonna slide it on this side just closer to this side push it in and then push this down and again we're gonna let this heat for about 60 seconds then we'll do a little rotate and we'll heat it a little bit more I'm gonna apologize for the fact that it's a little bit dark my ring light just was making some really scary noises so I turned it off it was kind of crackling um, which probably not good with an electrical device. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this a little bit. We're just going to give it like a, I usually do about like a 45 degree rotate and then I'm going to press it again and then we'll take it out and take a look at what it looks like. Again, I'm probably not going to be able to have the ring light on. It was making some scary sounds. Okay, she's done, ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and pop her out with the gloves on. This is a super important step, wear your gloves. And then we'll go ahead and let it sit for just a second. I'm gonna turn this off, I'll put you in the overhead shot and then we will take this out of its package. All right, we've let this thing sit for just a second while I switched camera views. And we're gonna go ahead and unpackage it. So same idea, just pull the butcher paper off. I usually find just doing that works the best. It comes off super easy. All right. 
so you can kind of see through this one a little bit better. I don't know if you guys can really see that on screen, but we'll see. I don't know that this came out as amazing as I hoped either, but this does take some practice. Like there's no, you're not going to be perfect at this the first time you do it. And again, like I hate taking my gloves off because it is really hot, but like sometimes you just have to. See, like we didn't get such a great press here, but I can see we had a little bit of a fold in our paper. And then right where the butcher paper was, was not good. But right where this was is fine. Yeah, the butcher paper seemed, seemed to cause us a lot of issues. Now I will say having pressed many of these, I do find that the frosted glasses are a lot more finicky and they don't all work exactly right. I don't think it's awful, but it's definitely not as good. But the color is way better on this than it is on the clear one. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for a little bit and then we will kind of compare them and we'll just have to kind of just chalk this up to a learning lesson in a tutorial. But definitely where this seam is, this was right where the butcher paper was um, and it wasn't super thick and there was only one piece of tape on it. So I think maybe I just needed to potentially leave it a little longer, but everything else looks good. So I'm not really sure what happened right in this edge. It's a little bit strange, but let's let it cool and we'll take a look at what they both look like. So here are the two finished glasses. So the clear one obviously can see through really, really well, but there are some light spots on it. So I'm not 100% happy with the way it came out. Like that, that right there is just the seam, which we kind of knew we were gonna have. But there, it's a little bit light in a few spots, especially where the tape was sitting. So that's something to keep in mind. And then this one had the same issue. So I think I just didn't press it long enough for where I had the tape. So I would definitely add a few seconds to your press. And then that's just the seam from the paper. So that happens. I'm still, again, not perfect at this, but we're learning together. And I wanted to make sure to kind of leave these in so that you could see that not everything I do comes out amazing. I still think it's cute, but this is pretty bad right here. So I would definitely leave these in quite a bit longer than I left them in. The color's still pretty good for the most part, but I would definitely do a little bit longer of a press, but I still think they came out really cute. And this is a great comparison to show you what they look like as far as a clear versus a frosted. You can see that the color on the frosted is much brighter than the color on the clear. Again, these are from Craft Express. I will link them down below for you guys so that you can make sure you find the correct cups for doing sublimation. If you like the style cup though, you can put vinyl on the sublimation blanks as well. These are super cute. I'm, I'm a fan, I think they came out okay. If you have any questions about this or any other fun crafts that we do here, let me know down in those comments down below. And let me know, are you a gal who loves a good leopard print pumpkin or are you more a traditionalist? I hope you guys have a wonderful day and as always, happy crafting.